This is the inside of an espresso machine that has been modified so that it's temperature controlled uh, by an Arduino rather than the original relay. And so the changes inside is that these two wires down here, the two red ones, have been disconnected from the, the relay and attached to this solid state uh, uh, relay, solid state uh, switch that is controlled by the Arduino, which is in this box. And then that there's a temperature sensor that has been inserted into the, the boiler. It's possible to see it down here. That's uh, where the wires go in. There was a tube for the, uh, the gas expansion temperature sensor associated with the relay. That was a nice place to put the, uh, the temperature sensor for the, uh, the Arduino. Uh, it may be that, that your uh, boiler is slightly different so that it has a relay like this one, which is used for the, here is used for the boiler, or sorry, for the steamer. Uh, you may have a similar one, so you just, it's just the two red wires from such a thing you have to put into the solid state uh, relay. And then of course you have to figure out which, which one is associated with the steamer and which one with the, um, the, brew, uh, to brew, the brew temperature. And then there are control wires for the, the solid state uh, relay going out the bottom of the, uh, the machine together with the temperature sensor out to this box which I just have externally. So to demonstrate how it works I'll just put this one back in so that we can have some water on it. Like that. And see if I can balance those in there. And then I'll, the machine is actually switched on, but it doesn't heat. As you can see from the, the light up there, that, that's uh, on when, the, when the, the heater's on. Oh, and I should say that since the only modification I made inside was that I just moved the two wires for the heating coil from the relay down to the solid state relay, that means that everything else, the, uh, the steamer and the, the dead switch for the, uh, the water level, has not been touched, so that works uh, completely as before. So if I want it to actually be temperature controlled, I switched on the box, and with the, the present code, which is not very finished, it uh, does nothing in this state one. But if I click this button down here, it will increase the state two, and uh, you can see this O for on, uh, shows 1.07, so that means it is heating 100% of the time. So in order to not switch the relay on and off several times every second, uh, it uh, I have to find a 5 second window, and then this, it, uh, for this fraction of the 5 second window, the heater is on and for the rest it's off. And the target temperature of 104 degrees, and you can see that the, the measured temperature is increasing toward that. Uh, level. Um, yeah. And you can see the light is always on now because it's uh, and now it's actually only heating around 80% of the time so you should see it switching off for a short period of time and then on again like that. Uh, it's it works fairly well, the PID. Uh, I chose uh, some more or less default values that uh, can be achieved with some standard procedure that I'll, I'll link to in the comments. Uh, also, I'll link uh, to uh, the components I used for making this and uh, the code as well. I think the total cost was about $30 maybe. Uh, stuff that I bought on eBay, but it would have some wires and stuff in advance, so it may be slightly higher than that if you have to buy everything. Now you can see it's actually off uh, on 0% of the time, and that's because it's uh, it's above the, uh, the target. Um, so perhaps I could uh, try and modify the, the, um, the PID parameters a bit in order to to uh, reduce the overshoot, it seems that uh, it should stop heating sooner, so it should put more emphasis on the fact that you can see that it's it's approaching the the target with a high speed. So that's the differential part. 
if I click this button in the middle here, I get to a section where I can change the target temperature. Just decrease that a bit. And so that's a, uh, one of the parameters, the proportional part, the uh, integral part, and the differential part. I'll try to increase that a bit to put more emphasis on the um, uh, on the heading of the temperature, you could say. Um, right, now you can see it's actually just before it was still on a bit. Um, that could be due to the fact that once it's, uh, when I'm changing the parameters, it switches the heating off so in order to not be left in a, in a heating state uh, if you somehow leave while you're in the middle of changing the parameters. Uh, it's possible to, uh, when you press this button to change from state 1 to state 2, it starts recording the temperature, stores it on the device. It can't record a lot, but you'll be able to, uh, to record a half hour or maybe an hour of, of temperature that you can read out in the green afterwards. Um, otherwise, that's about it. Uh, it works fairly well. I'll, I'll throw in a graph or a link to a graph showing the, the temperature stability. That's uh, quite nice. And uh, yep, works fairly well. Uh, if you have questions, I'll, I'll try to see if I can answer those. Thanks for watching.